This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the Delta Green role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is entitled, Like a Map Made of Skin. It was written by Dennis Detweiler, and it's part of Impossible Landscapes. It's available from Art Green Publishing. Our handler is Nathan Decker, and this is episode six. Our recap will be given by Nell Hipple as her character, Agent Gray. So, without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Nell? Time. What is time? After what happened, it is no longer relevant. It used to be as simple as looking at my pocket watch. The beginning I do recall. It started with Agent Dent successfully killing this demon who was posing as a teenager. With a shotgun blast to the chest. It allowed us entry into this duplex. I thought about getting into the hotel brothel bin by taking Melonia and drowning myself in a tub. Even if I do die by this method, at least I will feel good before being released from this mortal coil. Agent Dent, Donnelly, and I went upstairs to investigate the rooms, while the rest of them were left with the body. During our investigation, we discovered a weird cardboard sculpture and a scrapbook. Before we went further, there was some type of commotion which had Agent Donnelly go downstairs. Whatever it is, uh, Agent Dent doesn't seem worried. We went to the bathroom where we found a crime scene. There was a red stain in this bathtub, which I thought might be why I, dr I would drown myself. I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. I was more focused on the tape recorder that we found. Ten recordings, more disturbing as it went on. However, a voice jumped out at Michael Whitwer. It happened to be Ophelia, his girlfriend. Our cover didn't last. There was a, sh there was a shotgun, shotgun blast, and immediately we ran. Agent Dent held these gas mask men back while a doorway was created. Everything was happening so fast. I recall we ended up in a TV studio. I got hit by a shotgun at the arm and managed to make my way towards safety. Another portal has been made and Nancy and I ended up in front of a crowd of people. It looked like we were in the middle of a 7th century play and, and unfortunately everyone spoke French. Nancy spoke French and got into an amusing tussle with another actor. We exited, exited out of the theater and finally up and finally ended up outside what happened to be 1950s New York. For a moment, I saw my brother, Jeremy, and, and his family. There was no time to question. There was no time to ask. The important thing is to survive. And somehow we all did and made it to the Hotel Brodelbin. I believe that is the end. I can't tell you what time or day it is, was, or will be. As I said at the beginning, Time is no longer relevant. Very nice. And we'll kind of join our five agents as they have, probably out of breath, rushed through the door to the Broad Elbin and met with Mark Rourke, who is instantly pretty friendly with Agent Donnelly because they have a pretty good rapport. Looking around to set the scene again, you are in a... Uh, like one of those hotel lobbies, you got a fountain, some nice doors to the outside, a reception desk, and it's uh, the kind of lobby that's two stories tall, so you can see there's like a little balcony along the edge. Uh, a couple doors out of here look like maybe there's like a, a dining area and maybe a, a bar near the back, and one of those old um, mesh sort of elevators that you have to pull the door open shut it like that 
And all of this has pretty much been painted white and slapped with gold paint for the most part. There's some wallpaper here and there that you can still see sticking to the walls. And a close look shows that it's a little clown running with uh, a paper dragon behind it just repeated throughout. But I say on the pieces of wallpaper you can see because this place looks like it's been forgotten for years and just completely neglected. So at one point, beautiful. Now, pretty shitty. The area you're in does have quite a few uh, just kind of lounging chairs like a lobby would. And there are other people here just sitting around and chatting. Your bursting onto the scene doesn't seem to have surprised them at all. Um, but beyond that, you've got, what, two, three people that have been shot? And uh, yeah, you're all pretty tired, but feels nice to be here. So... What do you guys do now that you're here? And Mark's slapping Donley on oh, the back. My God, are they, are they still following oh. us, though? I mean, it's you got look, a glass front on it. Do we see the... Yep. You look outside, and it you see like a New York street, kind of that old-timey feel. But you do see in the crowds of people that are walking, there are still the gas-masked individuals just kind of circling like sharks. I don't oh, think they can get inside. Okay, I'm looking for a first aid kit. Uh, do a, a search. Is there a concierge? Uh, there is. Yeah, there is a man. Ooh, 44. I assume uh, that's a 20, critical. 24. Oh, 24. Okay. Uh, yes, there is a very old-fashioned kind of thing. It's mostly gauze and probably some drugs that are no longer legal to give for pain. Right. I'm going to take that off of whatever um, shelf or wall it's on and immediately go to Donley. Yep. <laughs> let's grab it. Um, I'm going to ask Mark, well, let's first of all, get a drink. Um, let's go to the bar. Are you, are you sure that looks like your friends there was uh, wrapping up your, well, Maybe uh, we can, is there a place to sit? Or, are you, know, are um, you sure you don't want to wrap her up? It looks like she's been winged. Yeah. You see agent gray with like blood, like uh, pouring from her arm we'll, and just we'll kind of annoyed her. at yeah, agent we'll dent. Get to her. Yeah, she'll be all right. I, I no, don't want to have a stronger bond with yeah. Don Lee. So that's why I went <laughs> I, to him first. I don't want to critique your triage abilities, but uh, this seems a little off to me. I I don't know, but uh, oh. yeah, it's yeah. It's been no, a no. long. It's been a long I afternoon. All right. Um, how about we get to. a hotel oh. room or something? Uh, yeah, and I think Voltus, you were asking about this. There is a concierge behind the reception desk, and uh, you do see that some bellhops come up and talk to him, and this individual is probably the sweatiest person you have ever seen in your life. Uh, and they're like constantly just wiping down their head and taking another sip of looks like maybe tea or coffee or something and doing something, but they're, they've just got a big old grin the whole time. Looks like have they're they directing things. Paid any attention to us? Coming in? Not really. Like maybe have looked up, but then looked back. Well, I was I was thinking, everyone, that I'd go to the concierge and ask him if they had a, somebody on staff, you know, like a nurse or something. But I don't know. He looks kind of sweaty to me. It's Jesus, we could catch ourselves up. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go talk to the concierge. <laughs> yeah, they have like a little drugstore or something. Like that. Okay. Good morning, I think. Uh, hello. Hi, Miss Barnes. It's the pleasure to see you. No, oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. Just wondering if uh, my friends and I could, could check in. Of course, you've been expected. We've been uh, waiting for you this whole time. <laughs> Such mm -hmm. a pleasure to meet. Such a 
beautiful young lady such as yourself and he's uh he holds out the keys you see he's got uh five keys in his sweaty palm but he doesn't like hand it like he's doing it so you have to touch his hand kind of he's that kind of weirdo yes <laughs> of course you'll find your room stuff on the sixth floor and if you if you need anything don't don't hesitate to send a bell a bellboy for uh albert of course thank you I'm gonna go and back. He, he leaves the hand out still. Oh, uh, 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 hey, I will. Uh, I will reach. To, I hopefully I haven't lost my wallet. Uh, yeah, uh, you have your wallet, unless you threw it at a gas masked individual. No, I, I. Why would I stop to try to fight them? <laughs> <laughs> is it is it possible that Greg I just want to give them like, like to. Like oh, say, you Nancy, I, yeah, you definitely yeah. have money. Hey, N N Nancy, I, I got it. Don't oh. don't worry about it. And she kind of rummages. You. Hmm? I said thank you? Question mark. <laughs> she just rummages through her like I mean, she has a counting of fifty. She usually carries like yeah. big bills. So um she I mean, I don't know if it's possible for her to pay for everybody. Uh, or... He doesn't put a number on it, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you you probably have enough for a pretty hefty tip then. Okay. And he, and he uh, just he, mm -hmm. yeah, it it just kind of disappears, and you can just imagine that money getting wet just from his hand. And he pulls it back, and of course he'll be wanting your automat tokens for meals. Uh, there's two for each of you. You get two provided with a room per day. You can use them in the dining room over there. Thank you Thanks. again. Of course. Charmed. And he's kind of laying it on thick with Agent Gray as well. <laughs> Sip of tea. Yeah, he doesn't want, she doesn't want to be around this individual anymore. And, uh, I mean, let's tell the others that, hey, there's rooms for us, one for each of us. Uh, let's, I'm going to go to a room. I, I need some sleep as she kind of drags herself to the elevator, <laughs> to the lift. <laughs> she doesn't want to be Denton, standing. Yeah. Enough. How are Dent and Donnelly doing with the patching up? Sent you a message. Oh, uh, you do get a bonus for having a first aid kit. I'll All give right, you a then, plus then I, then I make it. Woo! Uh, was nice. that a D four? Yeah, uh, D four. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. There you go, buddy. You you, you can walk it off. We're doing this in the lobby. Yeah, <laughs> or in the bar. I'm fine. It was in the. I, I pour but... some like <laughs> fucking alcohol on it. That's why we're drinking. Um, how much was that? A two. Okay. Cool. Now, where did yeah. where did Gray wander off to? You see her Before going the to the lift. She doesn't want to stand there any longer. She's really <laughs> tired. All right, I'm gonna chase after her. I'm not. I don't want to sleep here, man. Yeah, I. I don't know what. I'm on. I'm on rooms. <laughs> yeah, but what if it's the only safe place? They don't seem to be able to get in the building. I didn't quite catch that, Tom. I think your sure. audio is a little um, funny. Uh, is it better? Nope. Nope. It, it, it kind of sounds like underwater kind underwater, of. Underwater, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's how he got here. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's drowning. Oh, no. Um, mm -hmm. I'll chase Nancy, after Gray, then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Gray and Dent, you're going towards the elevator. Uh, Don Lee, you've barely gotten to the bar at this point. Like, you can... You can kind of like see it, but you haven't like made it in and sat down and ordered anything at this point. I'll just tell Rourke, maybe uh, I got to catch up with the group. Uh, maybe we can get a drink here another hour or so. I'd like uh, to catch up. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold down the uh, 
I'll hold down the seat for you. Please. Is that any better? Oh, much oh. better. Much better. Now I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see Gray Dent and looks like Donnelly kind of oh. running towards the lift. Uh, yeah, Nancy I, I know what I said. Yeah, what are, I was going to say, if, if we leave, they don't seem to be able to get in. Uh, you said you didn't want to sleep here, but it might be the only safe place. I actually suddenly, for some reason, feel safe here, even if mm. it's really creepy down here. Well, I don't know if I want to sleep. Go check our rooms out. We're going to sleep in this hotel that exists outside of space and time. Yep. How's uh, Whitver? You Did he get shot? <laughs> suddenly remember... You don't remember Whitver running with you. No. Oh. Did you remember to get him? I guess not. Everything was happening too so fast, so now his I ass probably wonder. got cooked. Well, shit. I don't know. Um, yeah, That's... I didn't. I don't really trust him. Um, maybe he fell back. The guy was mentally unstable. Um, it was his I won't be girlfriend, wife, or whatever she was. And didn't. You've got a pretty high awareness, alertness, right? Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, so you're probably the one that notices walking up behind you is you're kind of waiting by the lift. You do see Michael Whitwer walking up, but he looks more tired uh, than when you last saw him. And you actually do see that he also... Uh, is kind of favoring one of his legs like he might have been shot at some point um, but he, he's just kind of like to the point of a limp and uh, he just greets you with a, a really cold sort of expression and a, I was wondering when you'd finally fucking show up what do you Come mean on, called out for me Jesus Christ how'd you get ahead of us I'm, I guess I am a Yeah, I don't know. I've been here for... I, I, I don't know. I've been here for a while. It, you guys it, just it, disappeared, and I, I just had to bail. Like, it, it was it was bad. I, I don't know. My face is all over, and everybody's after me, and I tried to get in touch with... Ophelia, but I think she's gone. We well, were you're being here chased now. by the, the gas mask people. Yeah. Yeah. And I he mean, looks down as like, I know, I, yeah, I know. Remind me, did we, we try to keep pretending contact... like we don't? Oh, go ahead, Nancy. Say, are we going to keep pretending like we don't know who these gas mask people are? Are they from your own organization? Maybe. Uh, it, yeah. Um, however, I had a rather unique experience. I wanted to hide by putting on my gas mask. And the second that I did, I wasn't in control anymore. I'm not sure the gas mask people are actually in control of their actions. Something else is controlling them. I don't know, Whitwer, when you were sent to kill me, did you feel in control of your actions? And usually, like, before there was kind of a sense of, like, what's your human at, I guess? Uh, the, 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 my human is 40. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Uh, 100 <laughs> okay uh he gives you a look that's a little tough to identify uh very difficult to identify with a 100 and just goes the no i guess i didn't but i didn't put on the gas mask uh, that's not how you stay undercover that's ridiculous maybe 
way back in the day, but no. We, well, look, we time's not that. making much sense. Um, after I, I jumped in time by almost a decade, so you know, who's to say that these active static bastards could have been from a, you know, the good old days or whatever the hell you want to call them. Well, we just jumped from the 1700s to the 50s and the gas yeah. mask people were able to chase after us. I don't think... I, we got to be careful with what we're saying, okay? I don't know if we jumped from the 17th century to the 1950s. We definitely jumped from somebody's idea of the 17th century to somebody's idea of 1950s New York. But the the gas mask people were there wherever we were going, so... We did have to run to get here. And now we're here and they're not. They're out there. For so now. There's something about this place that's kind of protecting us. Well, it feels like we were herded here. Not um, so much. I just want to get away. some sleep. And again, I think <laughs> Gray I, is we, we, keep, we keep talking about yeah. escape and that they can't come in here, He's... but we can't escape this yeah, I don't He's know. He's already which pushing the button. Yeah, I think we to just to the sixth floor. I think we just <laughs> fell into where we were supposed to be, and they're out there making sure that we stay where we're supposed to be. I'm trying not to think about it too hard. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that's yeah. your mantra for everything in life. Got well, me this we were far. Told if you if you want to reach the brutal bin, you have to run, and run we did. And just about that time, you get like a little ding as the elevator arrives. And possibly the oldest man you've ever seen wearing a uh, like oversized bellhop uniform, like he's kind of almost shriveled into it, uh, pulls the grate open in a couple like attempts. It's not clean. And he just... Uh, you see it's got like that old directional lever sort of thing to control the elevator up and down. And this individual just looks at you. Oh, what floor? Uh, sixth floor, please. Make Next it year, quick. Are we all on six? Yeah, we, we're nods as well. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll take my key. We gotta find JC Lynn's. Plunk, yeah, and you kind of crowded. The elevator's a little tight with everybody in there. Maybe you could have taken some stairs, but uh, there's enough that you can all kind of cram in there. And he clicks it open, and you'd start to to go up. Um, and he's just kind of humming soundlessly. So you're just in an elevator with an old guy. Yeah. Um, how long have you been working here? Oh, all my life, I think. Well, I came here from Carcos. <laughs> ah. what's Car? What's Carcosa like? Oh, beautiful. Well, mm. beautiful. Oh, I'd love to go back. But the lake. Just... Yes, the lake. Oh, the lake. The twin suns, the black stars. Yes, exactly. So beautiful. <laughs> and he like coughs and kind of like the elevator slows down as he leans and he has to pull it back up a little bit. Oh, it's such a beautiful place. Um, who's got a good human here? Again, uh, forty that likes to yeah, roll forty. Yeah, sixty. I got, I six. got sixty. Yeah, sixty's enough. He does not know what the hell he's talking about. He's never been to like he's just kind of latching on with this stuff of like, oh yes, the lake. The twin stars, oh beautiful in the day. Oh, sixth floor, I'll remember that. Yeah. Uh, if you need me, just ask for Charlie. I'm always here. Uh thanks, Charlie. You're a pal. As she just gets out as soon as the elevator 
Do you Stop like puppets? Slow down. You're bleeding. <laughs> Do I like puppets? Uh, yes, come to dinner sometime. I have puppets to show. They're a hobby of mine. Hmm. They're not mechanized puppets, are they? No, they're the kind you stick your hand in and they go, ha, 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 ha. Mm. That sounds like Some an awful time. Yeah, I, I've written a few away. puppet. I've written a few <laughs> puppet shows in my time. Oh. There was a professor what? at Miskatonic that's. Uh... <laughs> I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> he a slams the elevator shut. You see, it's great. <laughs> Agent Dan Gray is not slowing down. She just wants. You can tell that she's rushing to collapse yeah. in the bed. <laughs> she's yeah, and you, you can get into bleeding the, the rooms. all over the floor. Yes. And... Yeah, let's uh, at least get you some first aid here. Yeah, uh, and you can go into one of these hotel rooms and you are instantly familiar with what's in it. Couple beds, bathroom. Uh, these do have windows on the wall because otherwise it's one for one that missing room from the Boxer Hotel. They're all just the exact same sort of thing. And yeah, uh, okay. Gray, you can pop down. Dent. Who's who's rolling for me, uh, for first aid, medicine, whatever it's called. It gives you a plus 20 since we have the first aid kit, but uh, if you want to do it yourself, you can. Okay. I, all right, so... <laughs> if you want me to do it, I can do yeah, it. Yeah, we can assist you. I mean... <laughs> I mean, she. I can imagine she has, like, one arm barely functional, while one is functional, so she might need some help. All but... right, we'll, we'll help yeah. out. You don't want oh. me to roll. Yeah, I, I mean, you don't want me to roll either. <laughs> <I> got it. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, seven. Oh, oh. nice. D four. Yeah, D four. Sorry. Hey. Okay. Oh, two points. All right. That's Not bad. cool. Yeah, yeah so and it's hmm? good, but yeah, you're probably still hurting, right? Yeah, um, I mean, that's six points. She took six points out of 12. She's only up to eight out of 12. But the moment that she gets patched up, she's just going to collapse and fall asleep immediately. <laughs> immediately. She is very tired oh, because her willpower is down to two. So she needs to have a good night's sleep. Um. Yeah. Uh, is there clothes? I'm just going to open the closet. Is there clothes for her? Um, there are clothes, but they're very, uh, Is like kind of of the time. Yeah. Like, uh, kind of the fifties sort of look, um, uh, but there's not like a, uh, what's the word I'd look for? Uh, there's all kinds of different clothes, right? There's suits, there's dresses, there's uniforms. It's take your pick. It's kind of in there. <sighs> they all look kind of cheap though. No robes. With masks, uh, you're not. Si no, no, <laughs> no plasticky robes, no masks that you're seeing. And uh, someone was asking about vents. Uh, it doesn't appear to be. Uh, maybe there's like a little vent for the heating or cooling. I don't know what those that t era of hotel had, but nothing. Something, something about it. the vents is just standing after me for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> little mouse runs through. Come and see. Come and see. Uh no 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 it's uh just a normal vent, but yeah Gray is unconscious, resting oh. up. Guess she feels safe enough to crash. Uh, go check out our other rooms. I want to find uh, J.C. Wins's room. Okay, how are you going to do that? I'll ask the staff. Okay, or look uh, at the the check in book. Uh, so sounds like Donley, you're checking out the rooms. Dent, you're probably going back downstairs. At some yeah, point. He's, if Dent is going back down, I'll just go back down too. I don't. Yeah, maybe even Rourke. ask uh, Rourke. Yeah, but we got a job to do. Okay, uh, Nancy and Voltus, what are you two doing? Um, I'm in my room. I'm going to go to the window and look out. Am I looking out over the city? Yeah. Yep. 
It's New York. Um, I'm going to lift the window. Uh, I should be getting stale New York yeah. air, hearing yep. the the traffic and stuff down below. It's exactly. oddly a comfort, comforting sort of feeling. Uh, is there any literature in the room? Is there uh, a Gideon Bible? Yeah, I think there probably would be at that at that time, right? 1950-something, sure. 1920s. Yeah, somewhere there. Yeah. yeah, we'll say there's kind of a an old faded Bible there. I'll get out the Gideon Bible and uh, look up some favorite passages. And I mm -hmm. guess what I'm looking for is, is this, has anything changed? Which is an odd thing to say, but I'm not so sure that we're not jumping from reality mm -hmm. to reality, too. Okay. Yeah, that's going to take a little bit of time uh, on kind of initial flip through. It's looking fairly similar but uh -huh. yeah we'll uh we'll get back to you and maybe make a uh a library role of some kind in the meantime uh nancy what are you doing well i was given this uh script while we were running i want to start looking at it more closely all right. Yeah, you're starting to read, and it is the king, and uh, it reads uh, "Her Gray Song" by B. Paget is the uh, the title on it. And yeah, you are going to start flipping through and reading this uh, this play. Um, we'll get back to you as well. Uh, as downstairs, Dent and Don Lee, uh, it's Charlie, brings you down. He starts to talk more about his puppets, but it the more you hear, the more it sounds awful. Like, just no fun. But, uh, yeah, you're back in the lobby. You see the way back to the bar where Rourke is. You see that creepy Elmer guy at the front. Where are you guys headed? Probably Rourke. Yeah, he seems to know everyone. He's been here a while. Okay. We also yeah. need to find our bottles. And get to the basement. Yeah, that should be in the labyrinth. Yeah, underneath this hotel. Rock would probably know. Yeah, he's he was there. I saw him. <laughs> so yeah, I would just you know slap Rourke on the back. Hey, buddy, what you what you having? Oh, hey, uh, you know, just a little bit of the hair of the dog that bit me, and he waves a you know pretty strong looking drink uh, at you. Uh, go ahead, take a seat. And uh, this is one of those bars that is also two stories tall. And there's a lot of like nice kind of plush seating around, just surrounded by old magazines, old books, all kinds of stuff from the 20s and 30s is kind of your feel. And there's just like a, a rug set across it. And people are openly just smoking up a storm in here. It's it's classic bar stuff. Um Dent, you are close enough. You do see that there is a lump under the rug, which is kind of interesting to you. But uh, yeah, you kind of like not a not like a human sized lump, like maybe raised that much. Oh, um, kind of squarish looking. And everyone's ignoring it. I mean, they're walking over it. They don't seem to care. Yeah, I'll look in it. Uh, it's under the rug, though. Yeah, well, it's like we probably have a knife the... or a bottle. Um sharp object that we can use to cut the rug. Okay, yeah. You're going to you're going to start cutting and you hear from the back a uh, uh, or a bellhop kind of runs up. Uh, excuse me, sir, sir, please. Don't damage the the rug. It's Put it on my tab. No, no. <laughs> sir, sir, please. Uh, I we really must insist that you not uh destroy. Why, why do you even need to get under there, sir, please? Do you know who you're talking to? Um, no, he clearly has no yeah, idea. Well, who this he's this is a three-star hotel at best. <laughs> and you're crediting yourselves on the best service. I need to get in here. Well, um, why don't I uh, get Mr. Lozette and we can see if we can um pull back the rug here, sir, uh, so you can 
look under it, I guess. Uh, okay, you run off now. Uh, and he he waves like there's a couple other like bell hops around that come over and are watching as he scurries back out to the front. And yeah, Robert, I know how to continue. Yeah, that. <laughs> Dunley you kind of patted him on the back, and he's watching. Then like, geez, Dan, give the give the guy a break, why don't you? Nearly you're triple that damn here, thing. You're like, yeah, you're trying to rip up the place. Come on. A little cut. I want to see what's under. It's a nice rug. It's not that nice of a rug. <laughs> it's a tripping hazard. It needs to be pulled out of there. You want to get sued? That's you yeah. know that's the American way. Sued in the twenties? Who's gonna sue you? I don't know. It's I don't know. have a drink first at least. Come on. Take a seat. I got you something. Kind of pats the uh, pats the things next to him. All right, I'll give. I'll give. Have a drink. Hey, I'm just glad you got here, Donnelly. I feel like you and I we've been thick as thieves since we first met, and I I love it. Yeah, huge it's fan. Been, it's been great. Uh, last we talked, you were underneath this place yeah shit i was wasn't i <laughs> how'd you get up he's lighting up a cigar oh uh i found my way down there one time and uh i was looking and you know i found you the bottle and stuff but i it's, for the life of me i could not find my own and then my lantern went out and i was you can't do anything in the dark so i had to leave and well you know how it is it moves around on you now, I, I got no idea where I'm supposed to go. Damn. We really wanted to go find our own bottles. <laughs> we could find you and bottle. about everybody in here. Oh, you're going to help me find my bottle? If we stumble across it. Sure, of course. Well, shit. Good Samaritans in my line where the time is rare. So you don't know how he got down there. Particularly. Oh no, no, I know how. I uh, I crawled through one of the uh, the kitchen things, uh, and I made sure not to look at anybody in the eye. No, no, the uh, oh, you haven't been in the dining hall. Uh, it's like the little shelves that the food comes in. Uh, oh, a dumb elevator. Yeah, the dumb waiter. A dumb waiter. No, yeah. it's it's a whole wall full of these things. It's not a dumb waiter. I I tell him he's like doing that kind of like drinking at the bar thing where he's arguing point is it's like eh, what <laughs> like no no it's like a wall uh, they put the food in there then you put the coins know. in to open the yeah, door and get yeah. the food oh you, brought, you, you get what i'm saying it, i did it's funny and i made sure no, nobody look in the eye i made it through one of the like the, the the things that they come through and i don't i don't know I when i went back the next time it wasn't there and oh, those things about took a chunk out of me. I tell yeah. you. <laughs> well, all right. Well, you know, is the uh, liquor good? Is it or is it? Stay. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty good liquor. All right. Cheers, Donnelly. Yeah. Well, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the rest of our lives, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, you guys are going to love this place. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I need to um, get back. As you're talking, yeah, didn't can you roll luck? Sure. Uh 27. Pass. Okay. Um the bell hop from earlier scuttles back in the room and kind of whispers to the other two and you see they they roll they actually roll up the rug for you. And they have to like move some chairs and stuff and they roll it up and they show you, uh, sir, sir, it, the trap door, uh, as you can see here, uh, and it is, it's just like a, a kind of rusty metal trap door in the floor. Yes, I can see here. Are you questioning my ability to perceive? Uh, no, sir. And they're kind of shrugging at each other like, okay. Well, this is the way to the labyrinth, I suppose. So I'm just gonna try and open this thing. Uh, yeah, you uh, you have to give it kind of a pull, and yep. 
you clunk it open and you are looking down into a laundry room and you can see there are machines that are going and people going around them throwing uh like bed linens and that sort of thing around and so this trap door kind of look up into the laundry room and there's other ways other doorways in the laundry room that i'm assuming people are going into uh, yeah of? yes uh, it looks like entrance? they probably would have okay um yeah if you're asking the bellhop you'd go no no there's there's other doors okay. uh how bad of a drop is it uh you'd probably like have to roll like okay. you'd, you'd roll some sort of dex or something or you'd want something to to break your fall probably i just rip onto the edgy edges and then sir, drop sir, down the, the laundry room is not for guests please please i do what i want they cut it <laughs> I, he's a climber there I guess. Um, and Rourke's just kind of like watching you. I gotta admit, I have no idea what you're doing there, Dan. Like, what's your plan here? Well, I'm gonna try and find this labyrinth, and I'm trying to find your bottle. He's determined. What do you have to find the thing? I just told you I had a lantern. What do you got? I need a lantern. I got a flashlight. Okay, how long is that gonna last? Enough. So I don't do supplies. You know, we'll get let's grab we'll, a lantern. We'll probably uh, find some supplies down here. If there's a laundry room, there's probably going to be storage for lanterns. Sure, why I not? Did... what? How'd you get your lantern? I found it. Like I was oh, looking. Real helpful. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Do you know the way around down there? You don't know. You just got here. Relax and enjoy it a little bit. I can't sit still and relax. <laughs> We're on the clock. Oh my god! Well, I'll Holy tell you word. what. I I like your attitude. I think you're gonna. I've noticed while I'm here that the people with focus and a drive tend to do the best. So I commend you. But I am telling you right now, you are frightening me a little, and you're kind of ruining my buzz. But if you want to relax a little, we can go up to my room. We can get rope, we can get lanterns, we can get the rest of your weirdos that you seem to run with, and we'll go on a little expedition. That sounds great. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's plus. Yeah, I mean, we get what do we want, and more. Uh, how about this J.C. Lins? Oh, shit. Yeah, the... Uh, uh, And you've got a good human dent. 62. Yeah he's acting like he doesn't know who that is. Like he's trying to do like a snap snap. Oh, uh, the, uh, the author, like the, the weird fiction stuff, right? He, uh, writes books and stuff. Yeah. 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 That guy. Yeah. It's staying here, right? Uh, probably. Why? Somebody we need to talk to. Who do you work for? Did you say? I didn't say. It's weird, don't you think, not knowing what you do? What do you do for a living, would you say? What do I do? I mean, we fix problems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who would you say you fix problems for, though? W. What does that mean? The name starts with W. Wild. Oh. <laughs> okay. I see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's actively standing up and scooting in his chair. Yeah. <laughs> Wild, huh? That's a... That is that is great to know. Great to know. Hey guys, I tell you what, I just remembered this thing I gotta go do. Tell you what. Uh why don't you come by and find me later? I'm at room uh five oh three. We'll have a great time. Um I will catch you in a in a flash. Just <laughs> stay frosty, huh? Yeah, with my human, he really doesn't like wild. 
Or he seems getting... kind of scared. He's scared yeah. of wild. He's scared of wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then he actually must do. And, his best and the stuff. fact he literally didn't know who you were, like when you were saying, like, who do you work for? Like, there wasn't a name he was thinking of, right? Like, there might exactly. be multiple people after him because mm. you've got a pretty good human. Okay. Well, <laughs> shit. Let's finish our drink at least. Yep. They're rolling He's the rug in back room up. 503. Three. Damn. Okay. Um, Agent Voltis, I'm calling on you now, now that you just took a drink. Uh, it sounds like as you're reading this, you have a like a pretty good role on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, extreme, I believe. 44. So you're reading through this. You're kind of checking through the book. It looks pretty standard. Um, but when you get to the end... The there is kind of a uh, an end page to it, yeah. and you recognize it's just on like that thin paper that they use. It is a uh, like a woodcut of the picture that Agent Gray had, like the uh, the sheep in the field, the shepherd under the tree with the the city in the background, Ooh. but. Looking at it, because you've seen the other one, it doesn't look exactly the same. Uh, you have a pretty good knowledge of art and stuff. It looks more old, like the city itself looks more French, uh, kind of a like design aesthetic to it. And yeah, it's just very. It, it, there's it's strange. It looks just a little different. It's perhaps whatever she had was kind of based on maybe this older piece. Um, or there's, I don't know, an artistic trend in this direction at this time. But yes, it looks very odd. Uh, I, uh, as I'm sitting there, I sort of look, I, 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 I close the book and I, I hold it and I look around and I say, Oh, Mr. Wild, what have you gotten me into? <laughs> and maybe you hope he appears, but sadly, he does not. Um, um, yeah. I think uh, on second thought, I'm going to open up the Bible and I'm going to very carefully pull that page out. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. hold it up and talk to it. Very nice. Very nice. And then and, I might try to rest. Yeah, that sounds good. I will say, though, you put it in your pocket and you feel it jostle something. And maybe you'd forgotten you had it, but you see that in that pocket, you actually have a little silver tin that you got a couple days ago from uh, the... The person that they said what what was their name Exeter or Marbus or Barbus, that oh, little right. tin yeah. they got, Elias. yeah, it's yeah, it's got the the clown face with the scratched out eyes. That's right. Hmm. And it kind of yeah, you shake it. There's a little rattle inside. It's just but like I a never opened tin. it, did I? No. I have immediate trepidation i'm very curious but I, I i'm going to is it the kind of tin that fits snugly you have to kind yeah. of pry it off a yeah, little you, bit uh yeah like an altoids or something where you just kind of yeah, pull on it yeah. and open yeah so i'll uh i'll grab the edge of it and open it just a little bit and peek inside Okay. Yeah, there's a there's just a little shape, maybe about the size of a corn kernel. You can see it resting in a corner. I'll I'll open up more. Uh yeah. like a little seed. A tooth. A tooth. A little 
like it, it doesn't have the root though. It's very clearly like a like a child's tooth. A child's tooth. Um in fairly good condition. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean it's, it's like clean. A child's tooth yeah. has fallen out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'll uh I'll put the lid back on it. And I'm gonna stare at the clown for a second before I put it away. Ah, curiouser and curiouser. Put it back on. <laughs> yeah. Rattles a little. All right. Uh Nancy, you are reading the book. Um, we'll kind of catch everybody up in a second, I think. Um, you're starting to read through this. It looks like a strange adaptation of The King in Yellow. But all the parts where the king does all his stuff, shows up, you know, no mask, no mask. That's all underlined like it's for you. And now there's something in all the conversations I've been having over the last few days with all these insane people in this insane um, place. It it seems like it's a very dangerous business trying to play the part of the king, so to speak. So I think I'm going to be keeping this information to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, is there anything you want to kind of do? We're playing a little fast and loose with the uh, the timing there is. Voltus is finishing up. Dent and Donley are coming up. Oh, um... I'm trying to think. Supposedly, there's somebody named Abby around, too. Seems yeah, you like left she... her a letter. Yeah. Yeah. You seem to keep forgetting about her. So then we'll wait for the others to come back upstairs as I as I contemplate this. Okay. Yeah, you're uh you're waiting in your room. Um, Agent Gray, you are resting. Yeah. Really tired. Very tired. Yeah. And it doesn't help that mm. you have a very strange dream is you uh you're standing in a sunny city and you're just kind of on the street and there's people moving around you it's a it's a pretty nice day actually uh a man rushes past and you uh you realize you have a well that's Whitwer that just went running by and you look down and you're you're holding a camera up. And you see a couple of, or sorry, three people walking towards you. A uh, about 45-ish year old kind of looking guy and it very clearly his two sons, uh, roughly college age. And they're walking up to you. And the closest one says, Jody, what are you doing here? Uh, um, Jody, and she's kind of thinking, uh, um, taking the sights. Uh, I thought you were going to Boston or something. Uh, right, right. Um, uh, I was, uh, well, un unfortunately, it fell through. Um, uh, I mean the the flight got the got the there was a delay the flight got canceled so unfortunately I have to go on a, another flight another day and she's yeah 
and the younger of them kind of tugs on his sleeve and he just goes dad dad she's forgotten her face don't you see she's forgotten her face Uh, hey, what? And she's kind of like looking for maybe a reflective surface she can look uh, at herself, wondering mm -hmm. what this kid is talking about. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah. what she's doing. Yeah, there's like a there's a window you could see in a building off to the side. You kind of look in, mm -hmm. and the face you see is not Agent Ray. It's this different woman. And you see these other three people behind you in the mirror just looking at you kind of in that window. Mm -hmm. And they're all just repeating, she's forgotten her face. How terrible. She's forgotten her face. She's forgotten her face. And yeah. roll sanity. That sounds perfect. Yeah, she'll roll sanity. Let me just... Oh, 73 uh, failed. Take a D4. And awesome. What? Yeah, what does Agent Gray do? Oh, oh four. Um, she's panicking. Um, she has, like, she clearly sees that she's in someone else's, like, she's taking a different appearance. Mm -hmm. and, but, and she's looking at these other three people. Um, she's shaking. And uh, she just starts trying to get away from them. She just starts to run at the other side, try to rummage through her pockets to see if there's any physical items, a phone mm -hmm. or something, or some some identification, like a wallet, anything. Yeah, and uh, there is, yeah, you, you pull out a wallet and you can see, mm -hmm. like, looking at the, the ID, that it doesn't have a face. It's like this distorted sort of like wave to the picture. Mm. And you're running and you're running and then you realize you are standing there holding a video camera and Whitwer knocks into your shoulders. He runs past you and you can see the three coming towards you and it begins to repeat Hmm. Okay. I mean, seeing this video camera, she's going to look through it wondering if does it give her a different uh does this does the environment does the environment take a different appearance as she looks through it? No, no, you it looks like it's been recording for a long time though. It's got like that little counter up and it's going. Okay. Great. Uh She's trying to get away from them as fast as she can. And seeing that there is a phone, uh, at least a smartphone, right? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's you've got one in your pocket. Okay. I don't know if she does, but uh, if there is a if there is a number that Wild has given her, she will try mm -hmm. to dial that trying trying to contact Wild. Yeah. You you punch in the number as you're going. It's this beautiful day. Sun's going. You're you're running. You hit it, mm -hmm. and you you hear the the ring and the click of someone picking up a phone. Hey, oh, Wild, are you there? It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living god. Oh, she just she just smashes the phone in mm -hmm. anger and just and you're keeps back running. yep you're back again videotaping and this repeats and repeats throughout the night so that's the sanity loss as you wake mm -hmm. up from this uh probably a, more or less a cold sweat uh but you do yeah. get back a d6 of willpower for resting okay let's see she'll roll for that one moment okay uh that is he's up to seven she wrote a five 
That's great. Um, yeah. And still she is uh, shaking, um, trying to see if there's any other change of clothes. She didn't get the chance to look at the wardrobe. So she's, got, she's just trying to find anything. It doesn't matter. Uh, she wants a new change of clothes um, that maybe makes her fit more of the time. Uh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can absolutely find something to that degree of uh, some outfit that you can wear. You can describe what you find, but it's uh, it feels more like a costume than mm -hmm. a actual, like the, the fabric is kind of not great and everything. It feels pretty lame, frankly. Yeah, it it feels gaudy, but something that doesn't have blood on it is mm -hmm. better than nothing. So she might look like a, a typical uh, woman of the 1950s, if that's the right way to put it. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, she's actually going to check her pocket watch to see if actually it's it, it reflects any time. Um, it does. It looks like you've slept for about 10 hours uh, 10 hours and, uh, yeah great and as you're watching it you are actually watching the hand go tick 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 like it's wildly fluctuating great uh, she puts it back in her pocket and um I think because she, uh She's just going to call the, I guess, room service. Sure. Yeah. Grab yeah. a little phone. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she's going to basically, she doesn't feel like going out of the room. She just wants like a meal where, where she is. She's able to pay for it. And um, I guess inquire uh, if she can send a message. And you can practically like feel the the sleaze on the phone. It's kind of tinny though, of like, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, what what kind of message would you like to send? Yeah, yeah, uh, Charlie. Um, I need you to. I need. Oh, you I'm to Elmer. Charlie's the idiot in the yellow. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't mean. I hopefully didn't offend. But um, I just need you to uh, send a message to. Um, uh, Mr. Wild, this is his number. Um, that uh, I'm staying at this room number because I need my supply. I run out. <laughs> just just yeah, say I'll get yeah. right on that for you. It literally hangs up. Okay. And she's just going to, I guess, just relax. This is the first time she has relaxed in a few days, so she's not going out of the room. Yeah, and make a con check as well. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, 68 out of a 65, no. Um, uh, the, that's a unfortunately, shame. no hit point recovery, but uh, you do feel more rested. Um, and you have enough uh, human to know that uh, Elmer's probably not going to send that message for you. As soon as you said Mr. Wild, he hung up. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, she's realizing that as she sits down she gets frustrated and just storms out of the room <laughs> and goes downstairs uh she's not gonna wait for room service well, she's you, too impatient you're probably gonna yeah you're probably gonna meet donley and dent coming the other way uh again time is weird gray has slept for eight hours the other two of you it does not feel like it's been that long uh crap she just she just sees the other two um, I need to get a drink. I'm going downstairs. This is the only change of clothes they have. I'm going downstairs to get a drink. Well, booze is fine. <laughs> okay. Well, that that's um, good. Mm -hmm. You're fine now. You you rested up, or you you couldn't get any sleep. Better better than anything. That's the first time I've slept in a while. It hasn't even been half an hour. Oh, what? Whatever. Uh, time is irrelevant. Um, I just need to get a drink. Uh, what were you guys doing while I was knocked out for half an hour? Scouting for information on how to get to this labyrinth. 
Uh, apparently, if you mention Wilde's name, it freaks everyone out. It freaks everybody out. And they sh- they clam up. Oh, eh, no wonder he's not going to send that message for me. Well, that's great. That's fine. Um, I'm going to head over to 503, to Rourke's room. Th- does he have but alcohol? Like- Oh, Rourke always has alcohol. <laughs> but I want to collect uh, everyone else first. Oh, yeah, yeah. But time me up for that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, where are the others? Uh, in their rooms. Yeah. Uh, I guess Agent Grey would just kind of... if you, She's going to guess. She's going to knock on each room. She doesn't care who she's disturbing. But she's eventually going to get either a Voltis or Nancy. And it sounds quite rude as she knocks on the door. Oh. Hey! Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'll come in and answer the door. How long did I sleep? Uh, You look, do you have like a, what are you searching? Your, your watch, your cell phone, something like that? I don't have a cell phone. I just... Okay. I do I I feel refreshed. Yeah, you feel pretty good. Yeah, if you had will point drain, you can get a d6 back. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh hold on. And I uh, come over to the door. I open it. Ah, Agent Gray. Mm. Yeah, um what's up? I guess we're going to hmm? sorry. Oh, what's up? Uh she kind of gestures to Donnelly and Dandra. I guess we're going to go to Rourke's place, Rourke's room to get a drink. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. Did you, How did you sleep? sleep? Oh, oh. I slept like a log. Read my Bible, went to sleep. Oh. Say, I, I did something really interesting. Um, huh? Look at this picture <laughs> from the back of the Bible. Um, does it look familiar to you? She kind of looks at it, and she kind of uh, takes out like the the Polaroid photo that she got from uh, yeah. from Exeter, comparing the two. Yeah, it's, it's sorry, similar, but, uh, but see, this architecture is different. It's older. Yeah, and do a search between the two of you. All right. Uh, I got a twenty. What is my <laughs> search? Ah, uh, nope, eighty-seven failed. Oh, uh, I got a twenty. Yeah, a twenty out of sixty, mm-hmm. so I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the sheep in the front, it's holding in both of them a uh the the yellow sign that ah. looks like it's like a broken stick, but the one in the Bible looks different. It's more sharp angles and the new you're now kind of looking at the sheep in a way that you hadn't before I, it's not a sheep it's you know, you, wearing a sheep but there's something underneath it is it a is it a wolf in sheep it clothing? is it is a wolf ah oh, look at that wait oh, very what interesting yeah she's so just tired like, like a parable, the wolves in sheep's clothing, holding the uh, <gasps> little friend, the yellow <clears throat> sign. Ah, we keep running into this, and I'll fold it back and put it in. Uh, and uh, I will. Could you give me like two minutes to change? I'd like to put on something clean. Yeah, uh, sure. Like, and she looks. I guess she's kind of, kind of directing to herself, like. I guess dressed like they are, right? At least it's a costume. I mean, I'm sure I can find something stylish in the 1950s and see what's here. Well, yeah. Uh-huh. Something smart looking and uh, join her two minutes later. Yeah. It, it's again costumey, but it looks pretty snappy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm joined. I've joined her. And uh, we get Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> who maybe being I'll oh, just knock on the door again hello uh, <laughs> yes hey it's uh gray um we're going to we're going to Rourke's uh, room for a drink you all right yeah I'll, I'll be there in a minute okay 
So how do you feel, Gray, about this place? Um, I found it kind of restful. Um, honestly, I'm taking what I can get at this point. Yeah, me too. Uh, nothing I really seems, can't complain. I think it seems a little creepy, but it it's also feels a little superficial, but um, whatever. You sleep where you can. Hopefully the food's nutritious. Yeah, unless it's a very cheap imitation. Well, yeah. I mean, if we poop chalk instead of poop, then mm. it's not real food. But um, were you able at all to get a hold of Mr. Wild? Oh, um, and I gestured to the other two, like in the hallway. Uh, they told me that if you mention Wild, people will clam up. I try to send a message to Wild with that, you know, that really creepy concierge downstairs. Uh, like he wouldn't, so I didn't know. Well, maybe Don't best know. not to mention Mr. Wild. Oh. Yes. He'll show yeah. up when he shows up, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you Either just see like... Or... Elias or uh, somebody else will show up. Still don't know what happened to Roger. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get more answers once we talk to this war guy, whoever. Yeah. Like, you know. And just so I understand, you are all kind of congregating before you go down to Rourke's room. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then in that case, you are all able to uh, to. Are you going elevator stairs? What's the uh, what's it's the plan? Just one level oh, stairs. Down stairs. <laughs> stairs. All right. Uh, room five hundred three is not terribly far away. And uh, who's doing what? It's just it looks like any other door. All right. Donley is knocking on the door and make an alertness check. Uh, everybody? Uh, Don Lee in particular. Okay. He's That's right a pass. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you had that like moment before you hit the door. There was definitely someone moving in there, and then they heard the knock, and then they stopped moving. But no one's like calling out. Just try the door. It appears to be locked. Did the click a click a? Is it uh? Okay, well I'm gonna try it's and kick the room. door down, and I'll tell Donley that. Are Are you sure this is the right room? Oh, this is the right room. He's in there, or someone's in there. Okay, well if he's in there, <clears throat> Rourke, we need to talk. <clears throat> um, make a persuade. Is is Dent is just very calmly in the hallway saying this? Yes. Um, Love it. Can I also say that uh, that it, it's 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 really not about Wild, and uh, we have nothing to do with you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and roll that persuade. Oh seven. And I'll I'll give you. Okay. You don't even need it. I don't need it. Uh. You have to wait a beat. And maybe you're just about to think about kick it and you hear the lock turn and the door opens and you see Mark Rourke there with his shitty toupee. Uh, it looks like he's been chewing on a cigar and he is packing a bag like it's it's on the, the thing. He's just been throwing clothes in it. Uh, hey, fellas. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, come on in. Come on in. Yeah, it's uh, let's just uh, no, no one needs to be in the hallway. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Let's go in. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, this isn't about you, Rourke. Wild doesn't want anything to do with you. He hasn't sent us after you or anything. We just need your help. Let okay. me level with you. Uh huh. Yes. Um, sure. Yes. And, uh, I, I just gotta say, I'm thinking maybe I'd take some time away from the whole looking. 
tell you what, you can, I know who you can talk to. You, you could talk to Alma. He probably could find your way down there. Asa has been useful in the past. He's told me ways to get in, but I, I can't be having anything to do with wild. Okay. Uh, anything. I'm going to open the bathroom door. Okay. With the intent. And you open it and it opens to uh, another uh, another room, it seems like. Like it's a, a nested room. And uh, it bumps into whoever is kind of in the back. Like you've opened up a, a loop in these doors. Damn. <laughs> is this the labyrinth? Huh? No, it's much more like a cave thing. It's dark and shit. What? No, this is the hotel. So we're looking into another room or something? Or? You're looking into the room you're in. Like you can walk in oh, a circle between. Oh. Yeah. It's very Man. portal esque. <laughs> it's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's not working. I was hoping we just get down to a labyrinth easier. Look, well, yeah. we're definitely not going to talk about. Uh, talk to Asa, and I don't really want to talk to Elmer. <laughs> it looks like we have to talk to Elmer to find out the labyrinth, how to get to the labyrinth. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you guys didn't. You were saying Linz before. You are you looking for him? Yeah, we're looking yeah. for JC Linz. Okay, yeah. Um, so you could maybe. I don't put in good wood for somebody that helps you get on his tail. Sure. Mm. And uh, I'm going to kind of let that previous talk through. It's like you're you're saying the shirt. He goes, okay, well, uh, before, uh, before we, you know, we had to go on the down low and whatnot. Uh, uh, Linz and I, we uh, robbed some banks, you know, before the name changes and stuff. Uh, oh, so, it you used know, to be. Uh, what? Labellus? Holy fuck. And he backs away from you. How did you know that? Research. Look, yeah. I don't give a shit about who you were. Continue. Um, no, I mean, I, it's, I, I, that's the kind of thing he wants to know, right? Like, nasty secrets and stuff oh well, i'm not gonna tell him i i don't know and maybe that's good like he's wanted he worked for that uh the mobster whose name i don't remember and it's tough to look up i i don't know he wrote those stupid books he was bad in the uh, drugs of some kind i don't know he was yeah, a Memphis, weirdo Tennessee, rob banks yeah right but look i i don't know i just He's he left. Okay, he left with a girl. What girl? The the Abby girl, the Abby. Abigail. Yeah. Was he, Lins? yeah. Was he the salesman? I no. don't know what he did. Maybe. Or the superintendent? No. Superintendent? You talk about Mister Castain? Might be. No, the superintendent. Yeah, he's around here somewhere. So oh, J.C. Linz ran away with Abby. Yeah. Look, I, I don't know. I I don't know. Like, she found her bottle. I don't know if she took her with her. Uh, took her with her. You get what I'm saying. You know, they left. I, I don't know. Okay. My Abolus. You know. Yes, and that's very, it's... like, you guys are know yeah. enough. Yeah, it's a demonic name. Um, it's but a demonic for Dins, he died, Dins, yeah, supposedly from the Ars Goetia again, yeah. And Dint, from your side, I'll I'll nip this in the bud. Rourke is not pinging your demon radar at all. Mm -hmm. Like he does not seem <laughs> to be involved with that. And yeah, you you, Nancy, you're saying like, uh, Labellus died. He's like, yeah, my younger brother. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. It's one of the reasons I want my bottle, okay? I think uh, I think he went ahead of me, and I just want to, you know, catch up a little. 
Okay. Interesting. You have a younger brother. Seems like everybody's always missing something, huh? Uh, yeah. Someone. I'm I'm going to try to, without being noticed, talk to say something to Nancy. Okay. And I'm going I'm gonna say the demon Labolus. It's glasses Labolus is the inventor of homicide and manslaughter. If that's the demon, that's a dangerous demon. You know, Voltus, when one is short on friends, one takes what one can get. I guess. Is he our friend? <laughs> nah, if this experience has taught us anything, or it's taught me anything, it's to get real fast and loose with the term friend. Are we friends? Voltus, you and I. I uh, we're certainly acquaintances. I I have, I have concern for your welfare, but you were you are in the same boat I am. You were pulled into this from the outside. Uh, it's uh, it's Simon and Arthur that I'm most concerned with. I mean Don Lee and Dent. Look, whatever whatever is going on here, and we should um, make sure that we properly scare quote that whatever is going on here. Oops. I'm not entirely sure that the two of them are really equipped to deal with it. They seem to have tapped into some powers. One can open True, teleportation. But they, they seem to things. still be convinced about setting things to rights. That old creed of keeping whatever ah. this stuff is outside of reality, and yet this is what reality I feel, is. I feel They're, like I'm along for the ride, but. They they found a bucket and have convinced themselves they can they've stopped the ocean. Like Saint Augustine. Uh well, I I just 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 keep a wary eye on everything that's going on. I'm sure you are. Um, does Rourke have like some like Ray is just wondering if Rourke has something to drink like whiskey or something. Uh yeah, sure. Yeah. Take a take a flask. He hands uh, you his flask. Uh thanks. And she you just... got lanterns? Oh yeah, yeah. You need all the stuff. You got rope, you got lanterns. Uh it and he actually goes over to the, the wardrobe and he opens it and you can see he has uh a backpack and rope and oh, uh, a pickaxe. Actually a couple pickaxes. Um three lanterns like he is pretty ready he's a little low on candles at the moment but those should be pretty easy to find like they're candle lanterns yeah i could probably get a pack of matches as well if we need it yeah that would be fairly straightforward everybody smokes in the the mm -hmm. 20s okay. 50s now whatever wait so, uh, um oh. i'll put on the backpack you seen uh you said the superintendent Castain? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's, the superintendent, yeah. Yeah, where's he at? Uh he was down the hallway, I think. I showed didn't I show you where he was last time? Yeah, you said something, but you know, you things get all muddled. Where's... Uh yeah, I think he's down the No wait. That place burned up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember if he moved or what. He's probably around there somewhere, but uh, it's kind of sketchy. Uh, you haven't seen him for a while? I'm sure he's there somewhere, but uh, 
going through that. I don't know. I'm a little afraid to go down those hallways. I'm just saying. Uh, why? Like, are you afraid that something is down there? Like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not really clear about the plan. Are we going mining or something? As she kind of looks at the pickaxes, the lanterns, she wasn't really given what exactly that they're doing. Well, last time I got close to the uh, this labyrinth with the bottles, mm. some portions like could collapse and another agent got hurt. So these pickaxes must help. Oh. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's nice to have. You you might need to break open a wallet too. These the the place doesn't make a ton of sense, I'm just saying. But yeah, it's uh Sorry, what was your question? I'm a little <laughs> I'm a little flustered here. You kind of got me over a <laughs> We're friends though. That's the key. Oh, I was just looking for the superintendent. Where what direction? Oh. Yeah, like, that's why it's real? dangerous. Uh yeah. there's probably stuff. There's stuff all over, but uh, also the floor can collapse cuz somebody set that place on fire. And the bellhops had a hell of a time putting it out, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, things happen. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Ain't that the truth? Uh yeah, but uh no, it's uh that's good. You go ahead, you take that backpack, you take all the stuff you need, and I'm gonna just I got places I need to go, obviously, and just you guys have fun, right? You're gonna have a blast. Where are you headed to? Oh, uh um out of the, the hotel. dining room. Oh, all right. Oh. I thought you're heading to a place car called Carcosa or something like that. I don't think I can get there yet. That's the goal, though, right? I think. Well, there It'll are methods. It'll become clear once I find the bottle. That's the key. Well, the one way you can... One way you can try is by drowning yourself in a bathtub. Oh, yeah. That's a great, I tell you what, that is my next stop right after I get myself a New York strip is I'm going to go find a bathtub to drown myself in. Of course. Yeah, it's it's quite logical, especially how much sense this place is. Yeah, yeah. And he's looking at you like you're an insane person. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's the drowning. Sure. Yeah. Just uh, put a good word in with Mister Wild if you should meet him. That uh, good old Marky Rourke is his. Yeah. <laughs> always a friend to the people. And just uh, uh, can you fix the door, please? And he's oh, looking uh... at the door that you've got in a loop of its. <laughs> I'll just close it back. <sighs> Open it. Great. I uh, didn't want to have to go out the window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do notice that it looks like he had unlatched the window. Uh, like maybe he was about to climb out yeah. when you <laughs> knocked on the door. All right. Uh, yeah, see see you later. Just have a good time. Uh, remember, uh, oh, I didn't tell you where Asa is. Uh, he's down on fourth. <sighs> Look for the water stains. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Have a nice trip. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you. You. You too. How many people are here? Huh? He kind of pokes his head in around the door. What? There's people? you. There's Asa. The bellhops. Elmer. Huh. Is that it? I. Oh God, no! And you know from being downstairs, like there's a bunch of people just around. Uh that you don't recognize and there's lots of rooms here uh, and he's kind of like I, I I don't I don't didn't count is there someone you're looking for is it Liam Barnes around oh shit Liam nah nah what no, he's not around this. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. He passed through again. Right. That guy's weird, you know? <laughs> Who gets all the way through and then comes back? Am I right? Like, what a, what a flex. 
Absolute jerk. I hate that guy. It's her dad. Anywho. What? It's her dad. Oh. Can my condolences. All right. Have a wonderful trip. I am sure we will meet again in the future. And you just hear him like running down the carpeted hallway. Nancy, maybe your dad still exists. Maybe he's still alive in here somewhere. He's gone all the way through. Whatever that, that means. I well think about this this place to Carcosa, whatever that means. To go there and return. Um beyond the pale, so to speak, to go beyond what is knowable. So who replaced him with a mechanical version? That's that's weird. Exeter, probably. However, so, however, in the journals he was making clockwork people. Have some a, an old French man uh, talked to me about this. It was an Exeter. One everybody was. calls Castain. Castain. Yeah. Castain likes to make clockwork people. I wonder what Castain's first name is. Augustus. Augustus, that's that's a rather uh, and because it's been a few years, you do recall that the superintendent was Henri. So uh, they are in fact two different people. Hmm. Well, Augustus is the author. Yes, and we need the author, or at least a bottle. <laughs> All right, well, we have our stuff. We can venture. So the Labyrinth is the McAllister building? The Labyrinth is probably under, like, in the basement level. Where they don't let any uh, hotel guests in. That's probably why they aren't able to find it. There should be a maintenance elevator. Right, right. Or something. Yeah. Um, also, let's talk about Darbondi. Oh. He's what the leader of this cult, Brotherhood of Doors. Yes, and he probably has information that he knows probably in his room. I'd be willing to check that out, and if I do see him, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. I figured you're going to say that. Um, well, he's only a floor down. You want to go knock down every door in that, on that floor until you find them. You should probably are, are the rooms they exterior? Do they look all the same? Well, or there are some that are that's larger. Yeah, yeah, they all they all look uh, the same. Like uh, you might have one that's like a little wider, just because of like you think it mirrors itself. So yeah, they're all about the same. So yeah, I I agree with Dent. I just will find the wet door. <laughs> How about uh is it possible for you, Donnelly, to open a door and lead into his room? Well, let's not abuse that gift that Donnelly has if he doesn't need to just do it. We can just go down one floor. Check it out. And check it out. Um downstairs at the concierge, behind mm -hmm. the desk. Is there the little cubbies representing yeah. each room? Or yeah. One? You know, there's an old trick. You can uh, take a note, go down to the concierge and say, uh, could you leave this message for Asa uh, Darabandi and then see which cubby he puts it in and you'll know what room he's in. But we already have a way of just finding his room. No, it's a good backup. No, yeah. we're well. Let's go Mark, Mark just said it was he, he's going to have yeah. a wet room. It's oh yeah, drowning, drowning, drowning babies. Over. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, the wet floor stains. Yes, wet stains. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so let's. All go right, let's. Let's go. We'll know it. <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. Uh, also, oh, we have very heavy pickaxes. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> accurate yeah and lanterns little... mm -hmm. yep, yep. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay. Going down to the fourth floor then. Uh give me a search as you are going down these hallways. Sounds good. Let's roll. Ah. Nothing from me. 50 out of 40. Yep. I like to roll the 20s today. I'd say that's a that's a good number, probably. Yeah. Yeah, 26. <clears throat> oh, I also okay. got a 26. <laughs> Again? <laughs> wow. Bad. Classic agents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We've been yep. working together too long. <laughs> <laughs> right there at the door. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, your your foot kind of hits like a spot on the carpet and it gives that little damp like ah, sink in. Feels like uh, drowned children, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. check the pistol, just make sure that you know it's fully loaded and mm-hmm. ready to go. Yep. Um I'm gonna try the Ball door handle. Down. Yeah. Uh yeah, we'll say it uh clicks open. Oh, it's and... open. Okay. Yeah. The room inside though is uh dark. Turn on a lantern. Oh, all right. I like that. So you've got like a lantern light uh-huh. that cuts through this room and you just hear the the voice of Asa Darabondi go, um, who is it? He sounds kind of tired, like maybe like he's been up for a long time. Oh, where is he? Just deeper in the room. Oh, but he he sees the lantern light. Yeah. Excuse me, I don't. I didn't order anything. Room service. I'm going to step into the room. Yeah, and you can see that he's walking around in a. Uh, kind of that purple bathrobe you've seen. He's got a very nice mustache, oh, yeah. little glasses, and he basically locks eyes with Dent. And there's that moment, because you still have these bandages yep. on your face, where it's like, who is the... Pickaxe time. Woo. Oh, geez. All right, what are you doing? <laughs> Pickaxe. Head. Oh, okay. Are you trying to kill him? Yes. Okay. Whatever happened to getting information <laughs> out of him? I did. I think yeah. I think Den just used that as yeah. a pretense for revenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go ahead and roll it uh, an attack. <laughs> okay. Melee weapons, I fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Oh five. Oh my okay. lord. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh go ahead and roll damage. How that. much is a pickaxe? Probably a D A. Like it's yeah, okay. it's pretty heavy, right? Yeah. It's also sharp, sort of. Yeah. Uh, six. Okay, I mean, where are you hitting him? You said head. Yes. Like, okay, I need everybody that is not adapted to violence to make a sanity roll. As Dent walks in with a lantern and swings a pickaxe, one handed, and you see it just bury in the side of asa and he yeah uh failure go ahead and roll a uh a d4 because you are told he's a killer so you're not feeling too bad but baby the lantern light is just like a spurt of blood as it like didn't you pull it out and it is you've cracked his skull certainly and he falls to the floor nice shot yeah he's (laughs) yeah oh and he's not dead it's worse he's just (laughs) kind of like Oh no! Like you've probably given him brain damage. He's begging for his life. Okay. No. I mean, he just got a lobotomy. So Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> now you can ask. Questions. Do you lose anything on a pass? <laughs> uh, still one. It's still pretty, pretty horrible. Yeah. Um. I'm just gonna take this opportunity to turn on like the room light. There has to be a switch or something. Yeah, we'll just have yeah. him sit there. Oh, why? <laughs> check Jeez. the bathroom <clears throat> um yeah there's no uh there is a tub there but it's not uh stained like you would expect like it's a perfectly clean tub we can no look around for any journals or or texts that might be in yeah. there yeah 
roll a uh, roll a search. Yeah, Ray will help around with that too. I got You're just hearing these got roll mutterings from behind of toss of the room. Oh, okay. I got. Yep, you do. Oh, I, got, find, I got it. Sorry. Yeah, you do find a diary. Uh, from there, and it uh, looks like his personal diary that I would have kept. Oink. <laughs> no, you oink. You hear from the floor. <sighs> he's like trying to pull himself on the bed, but it's no luck. Like he's he's in a bad way. Yeah, I think he's gonna stay like that. You pinned him to the floor. <laughs> no, you, 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 you can't. Just, you can't leave him like that. No, we need the pickaxe. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna check the closet and see if he's got robes and the whole shebang. Um, you do see. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's actually got a lot of uh, like travel clothes there. Um, and a small satchel like a, a traveling briefcase sort of thing yeah let's search all that yeah go through that okay uh um, we are completely just rolling his room yeah we close the door and yeah out of curiosity is it possible that he might have some melonia lying around any <laughs> drugs oh that is an interesting question um you go ahead and roll a uh a search as well agent okay. gray um mm -hmm. As you're looking through this uh, this little briefcase he has with him, and uh, it seems to be like a lot of architectural design sort of work, like uh, the uh, blueprints, that sort of thing. Uh, but you do find a small book uh, that is, um, I don't want to butcher the French, so I'm going to be kind and just say it is the king in yellow, but the title's in French. Hmm. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, I rolled a 43 like, out of 40. Like that. Uh, 40 oh, out of 40? Uh, no, 43 out of 40. So it's ah. just three points over. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's okay. No luck. No luck. He does not appear to uh, have gotten that. Is it possible for her like to shake Dara Bondi saying like, do you have any Melonia? <laughs> <sighs> Uh, it's a it's a little tough to make out. Uh, yeah. Your human's high enough. He is terrified and has no idea what you're talking about. Oh, crap. Uh, you five yeah. just showed up in his room, pickaxed him, and it, are, are throwing his stuff. <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. Yeah. yeah, Agent Grey doesn't really feel good about this, what she's doing. She's just going to drop... Darabondi, where he is, he's she's gonna walk out the room, just waiting for the others, a bit discouraged of what she is becoming and what she's became part of. So she is pretty upset with herself as she walks so, out the door. The architectural plans. Does he have the McAllister House or the um, building McAllister building? Uh, no, actually, he does not. Uh, he has a number of buildings in general it looks like were uh constructed in chicago but you do not see one that kind of just at a quick glance looks and like McAllister. yeah and uh, no, no brothel bin. Nothing, nothing that matches the brothel bin either okay i would also like to look at those plans and see <laughs> if there's any occult overtones to the way they've been laid out hmm um Yes. Uh, what's your occult at? My occult is at 40. Okay, go ahead and roll it at a plus 20. Uh, that is a 37. Uh, you said okay. plus 20, so... Yeah, so yeah, well under it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, plus 20 in a way that is beneficial to you. Um, he... There are a number of them that you're looking through, and there are definite occult feelings to it, but there's also like optical illusions and just weird shapes uh, that he's mm. playing around with. Uh, it looks like he kind of refers to them as thought houses. Um, 
as he's uh like kind of creating an idea of them you think he's probably maybe built a few of them but he's got others that he might be working on and that's in a little book uh they're kind of loose blueprints and then the book is the the king in yellow if the uh if the others ultimately aren't interested in them i'll probably snatch them up so now i'm starting to think i wish i had dust's house i mean uh, yeah dust's house so i could still <laughs> these things that i'm collecting uh, the book itself the um king yellow does is there a page that is marked or is it is it in good condition or is there um, annotations in it it's uh it's it actually it? a pretty worn um copy go ahead and do because you're just trying to do this quickly go yeah, ahead and roll through. a search uh, uh no not that one okay there are no like little marks in it like someone has clearly used this book before but it's unclear what the purpose of that is just on a quick look i'll hold on to it then and my French is not so good. I'm going to look in the journal, though. Yes. The journal is for a, uh, is about Mr. Darabandi. It looks like it goes, uh, again, you're giving it a quick look. Uh, looks like it goes through about 1921. You mean from 21 to modern day or to? No, it 50s? goes up to 1921. It ends oh. in 1921. Okay. Um, well, that's at a glance. I will, uh, each moment that I have leisurely, I will start working my way through it. Okay. You are standing in a room with a bleeding, uh, like dent. You're probably having a step back from the pool of blood that is spreading. Yeah. If you I'm want to get him. rid of him, we could push him through a mirror. Oh, and then close it? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't tried the mirror trick while we're here. No body. I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. A little bit of blood, but, you know. Well, you know. No, there's still but, no yeah. body. No body, no... Uh, no no crimes. <laughs> no, let's throw them through. <clears throat> Cut out the carpet. Let's... Put the carpet through the mirror as well. It looks like it's a roll-up carpet. So we're just talking about killing this man in front of him. Yeah, how does yeah. Nancy feel about this? Uh, it's very clear, Asa. If he understands, I mean, he's terrified. He's absolutely terrified mm -hmm. of what you're doing. No, this is. I know what I said to Voltus about <laughs> the not being able to choose one's friends, but. This is. Are you saying that out him. loud? And even Voltus is pretty chill. Like he's just leafing through a journal. Dude, this this I, guy killed like thirty kids. I yeah. don't. <laughs> no loss. This this isn't right. I don't care what. No, I, I don't care what the fuck he did. He can't let him suffer like this. Okay, no, I'll, we're not. I will put a pillow over his face then. Okay, uh, there's no contested in it. Like, yeah, you've, I'm just putting yeah, the pillow I'm, over his face. I'm cutting the carpet so we can roll them up and then toss them through. Okay. <laughs> if the and, uh, mirror thing works. I uh, We couldn't uh, really question him uh, because of the brain damage, but we, we should have asked him some questions first, but whatever. Uh, I am not okay with this, but... I'm used to just going along. So, uh, do you? I need to open it, or do one of you want to open it? Give the one that's usually opened it. Okay. So I'll. Which do we have a mirror in the room? Or uh, yeah, bathroom, bathroom mirror, mirror would. Yeah, bathroom mirror right. would probably be the easiest. So I'll I'll open it. <clears throat> Boy, I've done it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, make a so... sanity check as you're doing that. Uh, I got an 18. Well, that's, yeah, well, hello. 
Okay. No, you're good. Uh, do take one as you are. You finish it. The oh. mirror starts to like water starts to pour out the bottom of it. Um, like slowly. Like there's not a, a great rush, but it's it's kind of leaking into yeah. the bathroom quickly. Okay, so we'll take the rolled up body in the carpet and just Don mm-hmm. Lee and I will just I'll like, come in. eat it through. Eat uh-huh. it through. All right. You throw it in like it it passes through. There's a little bit of resistance. It like kind of slows and you can see this like carpet wrapped body turning in the water and these golden shapes kind of deeper in the mirror kind of moving. You're seeing them glint. Like at first maybe they looked almost like stars, but they're kind of floating around. Like sharks? Golden yeah. people. They don't give a predatory sense to you. It's more they're keeping a distance, but they're interested. Yeah. Good riddance. Yeah. yeah. And you wipe it down. It happened to a nicer person. Like <laughs> well, that's that. Yep. <laughs> we got a few things. Um, on to. So I think the Elmer is just the last one that uh, Rourke said could help us get to the labyrinth. Yeah. yeah other than not... that, we can just look for it ourselves. Yeah, Rourke wasn't very specific on how he got there, so I, I'm thinking you just kind of find it, like so many other things. Just like how we found the hotel? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And so it sounds like you are leaving the room and planning to go downstairs. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, when you go outside, Gray, what have you been doing? You kind of stepped out. Oh, yeah. She, because throughout the whole time they're doing that, she just went downstairs. She She decided not to wait for them. She doesn't yeah. want to be after seeing all of this, like even though she is unfortunately becoming used to it, she does not like it. Mm-hmm. So, and she's just thinking about on uh, uh, both Don- Donnelly and Dent, they're horrible people. Like, just to be, and that's the thing yeah. that she's trying to think about. I thought we can just, you know, tie him up or something. Get some, get some information, but no, just brain. You can get information from a brain damaged person. So she's just mulling about like mm-hmm. how idiotic we could have got more information, even though he's a bad guy. At least we can get more information. So she, that's going through her head as she just walks downstairs, or um, or even just take the at least try to go downstairs as fast as she can yeah. to make a call. Uh, probably the stairs would be the quickest. Uh, the elevator's mm-hmm. just a little slow. So, yeah, you yeah. you go down there. Um, we'll say, yeah, there's like a, a phone bank kind of around a thing. It's got like the, the separated phones. Mm-hmm. Who are you calling? Oh, uh, she got like a... You know what? She's just gonna call a certain Cabrera. Ah, very good. Yeah. Hey, you have the the lawyer's card. You know, give a call. It's uh. Yeah. yeah. And it rings. The mm-hmm. connection's not amazing, as uh, it sounds like someone picks up the uh the phone on the other side of, uh oh, I just had it. Because I, so one thing, uh, hello, uh, this is, uh, the office of Keys, Norris, Ingalls, and Grant. How can I help you? Hello, I would like to speak to Cabrera. Of course, please hold. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you get the thing. Uh, yep, this is Cabrera. Hey, hello, how's it going? It's going great. Uh, oh, I don't think I ever got your name. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just wondering. Uh, 
you should, I think. I'm just wondering, have you seen uh, Wild around? Uh, I can get a message to him if you'd like. Yeah, um, it's just that I run out of uh, my supply, and she's just like, I need ah. a resupply of uh, the good stuff, please. Mm. Um, have it delivered over, mm. over here at the hotel broad open. Is that possible? Um, you're okay. You're at the hotel. Good, good, good. Um, one moment, please. And you hear it like sit down and uh, it sounds like he's talking to someone kind of in the background. You just hear it and uh, come back and pick up. Yeah, actually, um, I've come to understand that there is actually a supply within the hotel. If you're interested uh, in the basement um, that you should oh. be able to get to. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's down in the Arboretum. All right. Um, my yeah. understanding is that's past the apartments and past the laundry room. Oh, uh, how convenient. Uh, thanks, thanks. I appreciate that. And uh, she's just kind of like keeping a mental note of that. Uh, cool. Um, great. Uh, thank you. Um, of course. We live to serve. Of course. Uh, well, uh, catch you later, Cabrera. That was mighty helpful. Of course. Have a wonderful stay. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll try. And she just like hangs up. Mm -hmm. And um, I think maybe at that point you just see maybe uh, Gray just walking out of this little, walking away from this little phone bank. Uh -huh. And um, and Whitwer is right there staring at you. And you are reminded that you don't remember the last time you saw him. And he's just staring at you. His face uh, looks more lined than even before, like he hasn't slept in a long time. God, God damn. Uh, wait, or how long have you been standing there? Is there something on my face? Can you even see me? Uh, Yeah, as she kind of puts her hand on his face. Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> right. Yes, I, uh, I don't know. How long have I been here? How long have you been uh, here? Uh, let's not, let's not think about that too much. We're going to go to the basement and let's get this, uh, let's just get this over with. Yes. The faster we get this over with, the faster you can get to Ophelia. Oh, that's right. I just talked with her. Oh. She's uh, there waiting for me. Cool. That's why we should go there and see her. Um, come on. Uh, follow me. <laughs> yeah, and do you you're are you like grabbing him, shuffling yeah, him? Yeah, the... shuffling him. Almost like putting her arm around his shoulder, just leading him. You're getting the impression he's lost quite a bit of weight too as you're like kind of like oh. moving him around oh jesus uh um maybe um she's just trying to trying to think and maybe at this point they might see uh gray yeah. having her arm around yeah i think he's uh, trying to contemplate yep. yeah come down mining equipment in tow Whitwer and gray moving out She kind of waves to them like, oh, hey, um, you said something about a basement, right? Yep. Oh, I know where to go. Just follow me. All right. Okay. And you know from that call that you need to go down and we'll kind of follow the group as you are exiting the lobby taking the, uh, the stairs down into what looks to be the living quarters of all the people that work here. So you're kind of exiting this faded op opulence and getting into faded working conditions. So somehow it's getting even shittier. All right. Is there is there anything anyone would like as we wrap up? 
or is the group kind of just determined? No, there's. They all seem convinced that they're gonna find the way, but there isn't. There is apparently someone who knows the way. Liam. I don't know. I don't know if I have an interest in following these people. Asa shouldn't sit, sit on the throne. That much is certain. But I don't think neither of these people should either. I'm probably sensitive to Nancy's look on her face. And I try not to let it bother you too much. It's like we're in a play that neither of us know what's going on. I would have liked to talk to Asa too, but I think that something happened between Asa and Dent that we're just not aware of. I mean, I know that he was a child murderer, so for some reason it triggered something in Dent. I'm guessing that Asa deserved it. But I'm not really involved, except in this capacity. If this is a play, then Agent Dent is destroying what? Figures? Shadows? I don't know. But... I'm surrounded. I've been surrounded by madmen and fools ever since I stepped off that street in Providence. Maybe it would have been better off dead. Nobody's ever better off dead. When you're dead, you're dead. But doesn't it kind of feel like a play? I mean, everybody's playing a role, and we're all dressed in costumes. His it does feel that feel, way. These clothes don't feel like anybody made them with any great skill or, or luxury, but they look good, and... They don't feel good. They're cheap material. If this is a play, and I think you are right on this, if everything's been a play, always has been. I don't know if my has... part calls for me to continue following you all. It has something to do with that damn book, that King in Yellow. Uh, well, I certainly can't tell you what to do, but I have to see the end of the play. And apparently it's leading downstairs at this point. I'd like to tell you that I'd protect you, but I don't know if I'm even capable of that. No one will protect me. That much is clear. I think that's true. The only one, lives. the one responsible for all this happening to me apparently comes in and out of this place. I don't give a fuck what the rest of you do. I'm finding my dad. Ooh, uh, that. Is that what you're saying to us? I'm saying that's the Voltus. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're talking. Yeah. So is um, is Nancy breaking? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gray. Oh no, 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 nothing. So is Nancy breaking off from the group? Yes. Okay. However unwise that may be, that is what Nancy uh, will do. I will just for you know what Voltus knows. Um, I think Dent is probably enough, unless you're really trying to sneak. Uh. I think it's probably pretty easy to just go away. Oh, I'm not going to stop her. I figured that would be the case. Yeah. I, I wouldn't stop her either, but I'm concerned for her. Oh, Ray is not concerned. She's she's a grown ass woman. She can do what she wants. Uh, in that case, before we finish tonight, I want to follow Nancy 
Nancy, you maybe you were kind of getting down in the stairwell towards these employees and you break off there, right? And you're back in the lobby. And you see there is a woman there kind of standing um, just off to the side. Like she came around a corner after you walked around and she's uh, about your age, you think? Um, and just uh, just a tangle of black hair and a, a nightgown. It looks like she just like woke up. Um, but she's walking towards you. Good, whatever I... time it is. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I got your note. Uh. I think we should talk. And she shows you the note that says, Hey, Abs, it's Nance. We should talk. And she says, I th think you should be careful what you're doing. I'm Emmeline, by the way. And she kind of clasps your hand. Emmeline. What is it that I'm talk. doing, Emmeline? Yeah, and she says, I think we'll talk and we'll kind of fade out from the lobby for today. As you are apparently talking with someone that knows you. That's it. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Alex Sun, Nell Hippel, Thomas Grooms, and myself with Nathan Decker as the handler. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you'd like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description. Or you can use Super Thanks by hitting the buttons just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows, and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Delta Green role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Good gaming.